In this two-part video, we'll solve a linear system of equations involving a truss. The last video set up the equations governing the truss we're given. Now that we have the A, X, and B matrices, we can transcribe it in MATLAB. Here we are in the skeleton script. Part A is already filled out for us, and it confirms what we previously established in the last video. To kick off Part C, let's define some variables we'll use when writing the A, X, and B matrices. Th1 and Th2 represent theta1 equals 30 and theta2 equals 60 degrees, respectively. Our A matrix contains some trig terms, so I made these variables just to prevent us from hard coding. The Px's and Py's are the externally applied forces. Once again, P1y has a negative value because we assumed it acts in the positive y direction, but in reality, the force points downwards. Now that we've gotten this out of the way, let's write A, X, and B. The A matrix uses the sine d and cosine d functions because the angles we have are given in degrees. The regular sine and cosine functions operate using radians, so make sure you convert th1 and th2 to radians if you want to use the regular sine and cosine functions. Also, be very careful with your minus signs since this is a really big matrix. Looking at the A inverse matrix, we can see that it contains a lot of zeros. This tells us that applying an external force somewhere may not affect an internal or reaction force. Take, for example, the 1 6 element. This particular element represents the change in F1 if we apply 1 newton to the 6th input, P3y. In fact, the entire 6th column except the last element is 0. If we pull upwards on the roller joint, the force in F1, F2, F3, H2, and V2 will not change. Instead, the 1 newton upward force we apply is countered by the reaction force, V3, which will increase by 1 newton in the negative y direction to keep the joint in equilibrium. Suppose we increase the horizontal externally applied forces, aka P1x, P2x, and P3x by 1 newton. When P1x increases, the forces in all six unknowns change slightly. An increase in P2x only affects H2, the horizontal reaction force. This should make sense because the reaction force must act in response to the applied force. Changing P3x affects F2 and H2, but not F3. F3 cannot change because it has a vertical component, and therefore a change in F3 would disrupt the equilibrium with V3. Therefore, the new load must only be shouldered by F2 and H2. Take a few minutes to really analyze the system based on the matrix inverse. Doing so will help you understand how the different components of the truss are, quite literally, connected. The last line of the script solved for the x vector, which I just renamed f for force. When we only apply a 2000 newton downward force at node 1, we see that f1 and f3 are negative. This means they act in the direction opposite to what we assumed, which perfectly lines up with what we predicted in the last video. The fourth element, which corresponds to h2, is 0. This is because only applying a vertical force nullifies the need for a horizontal reaction force. This can be confirmed in the matrix inverse. Every even numbered column represents a unit change in an externally applied vertical force. The fourth row of each even numbered column is zero, so applying a vertical force does not affect H2 whatsoever. Now let's move on to part D. In part D, we perform a parameter study on P1y. P1y will vary from 0 to positive 2000 newtons, so the force is always applied upwards instead of downwards, like the picture from the problem statement. 
the p1y vec variable holds the forces from 0 to negative p1y. We set p1y equal to negative 2000 earlier in the code, so the double negative makes it a positive 2000. We then instantiate a matrix called applied forces. It has 6 rows and 2001 columns. Each column represents the externally applied forces. We then replace the entire second row of the matrix with the p1y vec vector. Finally, we solve the system for all cases of p1y at once using the matrix inverse. In the past, we probably would have done this parameter study using a for loop, feeding in an individual column from the applied forces matrix within the body of the for loop. You can still do that, but this is just a more efficient and slightly more elegant method. The dimensions work out. A inverse is 6 by 6, and applied forces is 6 by 2001, so the multiplication yields a 6 by 2001 matrix, which lines up with what we want. Now let's go and inspect the plot. When we apply an upward force to node 1, both of the vertical reaction forces become negative. We can also see that F1 and F3 are positive, so they point in the directions we assumed. We originally assumed they point downwards, which is now correct because they both need to act in opposition to P1y. Note that for any value of P1y, F3 has a greater magnitude than F1 because F3 has a larger vertical component than F1. Going back to V2 and V3, we see that the magnitude of V2 is less than the magnitude of V3. P1y is applied closer to node 3 than to node 1, so V3 has to bear more of the weight than V2. You can also think about this from the statics perspective. In addition to the sum of the forces in both directions being zero, the sum of the moments about a point must also be zero. If we sum the moments about node 1, we find that V3 is greater than V2 because the lever arm from node 1 to node 2 is longer than the lever arm from node 1 to node 3. As previously confirmed, H3 is always zero because altering P1y has no effect on the horizontal reaction force. The last part of the problem wants us to investigate changes in the unknown forces when we make some changes to the B vector. In particular, we want to know what happens when P1y is doubled from negative 2000 to negative 4000 newtons, and also when we now apply a horizontal force of negative 1000 newtons at node 3. These variables all represent the changes in the externally applied forces. Note that dp1y is the same as p1y because the force doubles, so the change in the force is just that amount. Also, don't forget the negative in front of the 1000. I made a new b vector which represents the changes in each externally applied load. Then I resolve the system to find df, the changes in the forces. As expected, the fourth element, which is h2, now becomes non-zero. The second element, which is F2, changes as well. Hopefully the reason why is clear by now. The DF vector gives us the changes in the forces, but what we're really interested in are the new forces within the truss. This line says that the new force is the original forces we had just from the sole negative 2000 newton force at node 1, plus the changes of the forces when we increased P1y and added P3x. To check ourselves, let's solve the system when we supply a B vector representing all the forces applied at once. This B vector contains a negative 4000 newton vertical load at node 1, 
and the minus 1000 Newton horizontal load at node 3. We can see that f tote and f nu look pretty similar. We can confirm this assertion using the norm of the error between these two vectors. When we compute the infinity norm of the error vector, we get zero, so the two vectors are identical. I hope this quick check makes sense. When we solve the system as if all the loads were applied at once, we get the same result as if we solve the system for one particular set of loads, then add it to the resulting solution when we change those loads. This concludes the truss problem. To recap, we drew free body diagrams of each joint, generated the A, X, and B matrices from our set of equations, and then solved the system for a few test cases. We made heavy use of the matrix inverse to physically understand the system and to check our answers using intuition. We saw that we can use the matrix inverse to compute the changes in the unknown forces due to the changes in the externally applied forces. When we add the original solution and the changes in the unknowns, we get the same answer as if we solved the system when all the loads were applied at once. This is a great problem because it's lengthy, yet simple enough to apply your physical understanding of basic mechanics to continually check yourself. See you next time.